All right, this time I'm going to show you how to make a vase. So first we're going to start off by just creating a sketch. And now to make the vase, because it's going to be a rounded shape, we're going to use a revolve instead of an extrude. A revolve is just a way to take a two-dimensional shape and drag it into three-dimensional space, but instead of dragging it in a straight line like we do with an extrude, we're going to drag it in a circular fashion to make a, um, a circular symmetrical shape. So when you do this, you got to think for a second. So if I, for example, drew a triangle and I revolved it around, spun it around one of its sides, it would turn into a cone. So the way you draw shapes that you want to make a revolve out of, think about the shape you want to create, kind of look at its, at its profile, look at its shadow almost, and then cut the shadow in half. And that's what you'd like to draw. So if you want to draw a sphere, for example, you would draw half of a circle and then spin that around the side of the circle. If you want to make a donut, you would draw a circle and then spin it around some axis that's kind of offset from the circle somewhere. If you want to make a cone, like an ice cream cone, you would draw an upside down triangle where a 90 degree triangle and spin it around the 90 degree side and then that would make a cone shape. So we're going to start by drawing the kind of flat side of our of our vase, the flat side, the bottom, or the kind of middle of our vase, the bottom and then the top parts, use those to dimension how big our vase is, and then we're going to draw the curved edge using a spline and then revolve it around. So start by just drawing some lines here. I'm going to start at the center, just so I'm in the middle of my drawing. Drag it up, and now we, this is when we can choose how tall our vase is. Again, I'm not making something huge for flowers or making something we can 3D print out. So I'm going to make it, let's say, I don't know, about 70 millimeters tall sounds good to me. So there's my first line. So I'm gonna then come out a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of freehand this and see what, I'll draw it and see what works. Put the top line there, draw one more line on the bottom. I'm gonna make the line in the bottom a little bit smaller because I want the bottom of the vase to be small and the top to have a bigger opening. Let's come out to say 10. And now I'm gonna throw a couple dimensions on here just so I have them. 10 is good for the bottom. For this top piece, let's make that a little bigger. Let's make that 16. So now we have a general layout for the size of our vase. So now I'm gonna to go to sketch and pick a spline, where a spline is just a curved feature and which has control points on it that allows you can, to control what the curve looks like. So I'm gonna just kind of, ran, or not randomly, but just freehand sketch the basic layout of how I want this to go. So I want this vase to have a couple wiggles in it. I'm gonna have it come out, come back in, come out again, come back in, then curve up into the top. So I'm just gonna kind of trace the path I would take and click along the way. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom, want it to come out, come back in, come out a second time, come back in, then curve up to the top. And I'll finish my drawing by hitting a check. And now I have this nice curved shape here that was kind of freehand done that's gonna create the profile of my base. Now, I, at this point I can also, if you look at these dots, the black dots control where the kind of curve is so I can grab them and move them around, change the shape of my of the curve here on my vase. If I click on one of the dots, I can grab these control arms, these green arms, and this actually just kind of controls how how curvy that basically the radius of the curve that makes that that curved arc section. So you can kind of after you draw the general shape, you can kind of go in here and play with these a little bit and get it to the exact shape or close to the exact shape you want. And this is fine for me right now. So I'll hit stop sketch. And again, you notice I drew half of what my vase is gonna look like. Now I'm gonna take this and spin it around in a circle and it should carve out a three dimensional space that looks very much like a vase. So to do that, I'm just gonna to go to create. I'm not gonna click the extrude button this time. I'm gonna to go to create and go down to revolve. So again, first thing is what profile, just like extrude, I'll pick my vase profile. And then it's this, and then I'm that I'm only gonna pick one thing here. I'll go down to axis. Now this is asking me what axis do I want to revolve around? And I want to revolve around the edge of this thing that I drew. So I'm just gonna click on this edge right here, and it should automatically spin it around. And now there's an angle here, so I could spin it around less than 360 degrees. If I grab this, I can kind of spin it around a quarter, a half, three quarters, so it's like a Pac-Man, and kind of go around and around and around. Now sometimes you might want to not do it all the way around, but in this case, we want to spin it around 360 degrees because I want to complete make a complete vase structure, and I'll hit OK. 
and there's the layout. Now there's one problem. This looks more like a candlestick than a vase because it's not hollow on the inside. So I'm going to go up and use another feature. Go to modify and the fourth one down is called a shell. And it's asking what face. So I'm going to click on the face I want to be open. What this is going to do, it's going to hollow out my object and I'm going to tell it how thick I want the walls to be and it's going to hollow out the last. So I'm going to click the top here because that's where my opening is. I'm going to type in, let's see, let's start with two millimeters and see what that looks like. I'll type in two and if you notice it hollowed it out and made the walls two millimeters thick. That's pretty good. Let's see if what happens if we can go down to one if it gets too thin. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep it set at one millimeter and then hit OK. And so that was pretty easy. I basically just drew my, drew my profile, revolved it, and then shelled it out. Now I want to add an, an extra little feature. I'm going to add a shamrock onto the front of this. So I'm going to do that by creating an extrude of a shamrock, have it come out through the side of the vase, and then show you a couple little tricks of how I can carve it off so it it lies um, right on right on the edge of my surface here and with the same shape as my surface. So to do this, so I'm going to have to go back in time because I want to do the shelling at the very end. So I'm going to go down to my timeline and just drag it back one step before the shell. Because I want to do this, I want to create my shamrock before I do the shell at the end. So I, I'm there and I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to sketch out one of these inside planes because I'm going to have it come out through the thing. And it's going to get carved off by the shell afterwards, so that's going to be fine. So I'll click this plane, and zoom in a little bit. Now I'm just going to draw, I'm going to actually draw a couple construction lines just so I can kind of figure out exactly where I want the shamrock to be. So I'll draw one vertically. I'm going to draw one, let's finish that. I'm going to draw one through the middle about where I want the shamrock to be. Let's put it right there. And then I'm going to try to draw a shamrock around that spot. So I'm to draw my shamrock. I'm just going to draw three circles. And I'm just going to kind of freehand this. Oops, I made a mistake. I'm still drawing construction lines. So be careful when you draw construction lines because if you don't turn them off, everything is one. So I'm going to click on that circle and not make it a construction line. Let's give it an even dimension though. Let's make it seven. That sounds good. I'm going to make two more circles that are seven. Still have construction line turned on. And again, I'm just going to freehand where these are just to make it look okay. So I'm going to have them overlap like that. Seems fine. And I'm going to then use my mirror and mirror it across the middle so my shamrock is nice and symmetrical. Mirror, I already had selected that. Mirror it across this construction line. And now if you notice, my shape is not completely um, contained. It's a bunch of things overlapping. So I'm going to use another command called the trim command. If I go over the sketch, go to the bottom, click on trim. Wherever these lines overlap, Fusion is going to break the shape at those things and, and kind of make it separate lines. So if I come in here, all these things are made out of these different lines. So I want to, I want to kind of get rid of the ones that are in the middle here. So I'm just going to delete all these that are in the middle. Get these little guys in there. So now I have this nice outline. Now when you do this, Fusion doesn't always tell you that this is a closed shape, but we can kind of look at it and I'm pretty sure it's a closed shape. I'm gonna draw one more thing. I'm gonna draw another spline and make the tail of the... Spline down here, I'm gonna make the kind of the, the stem of the shamrock. I'm just going to freehand this again. Let's draw a line to close that off. Let's curve these a little bit because the stem looks kind of a little bit too fat. That looks better. And also, you notice the screen's kind of blinking in here. I'm going to go down and turn off just for a second the shading and go to wireframe with visible edges only just so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go back to my trim. You can also use the letter T to trim and let's trim off these pieces in here. 
and now I have a passable shamrock. Good enough for our purposes. So I'll hit OK, and I'm going to go turn the shading back on. And now I want to extrude my shamrock to come out of this thing. So I'm going to make an extrude. Click on our shamrock, drag it. I'm going to have it come way out now. If you notice, it thinks it wants me to make a cut because it's already inside where there's materials. So I'm going to change this to join and kind of have it come out past this. Now that's kind of okay, but it looks kind of weird because it comes out really far past this. So I'm going to show you one trick that I learned that lets me kind of take the shamrock and make it so it's it follows the contours of my vase. So I'm going to go back in time again to my original sketch. I'm going to double click on there that I drew to make the vase. And I'm going to click on this curved spline, go to sketch, and use something called an offset. This is going to take that shape and actually just slide it a little bit. I'm going to have it slide just one, me one millimeter. So again, it took, so if you look at the red thing, it took this blue shape, slid it over one millimeter at every single spot, and I have this exact duplicate of it, but shift it a little bit. So I'll accept that. Now I'm just going to make this a close shape. So I'm going to draw a couple lines. doesn't really matter what these look like. I just want to close off. this curve and I'm just going to stop the sketch. Now I have my original sketch now if I go back and take a look at it let's go back to them. It has actually two pieces to it. It has the original sketch I used to make my um, vase and it has this new piece I added on and we never use this new piece yet. I still can I can have two sketches until I'll just use one of them to make the vase but now this new piece is going to be important because I'm going to take this new piece and I'm going to do another revolve. So to create revolve, I'm going to select the new piece I just drew and I'm going to revolve it around the center axis again, the same way I revolved my original one across. And if you notice, it goes around and knows to cut because there's some stuff over there. And if you look, it actually slices off that shamrock so it follows the contour of that offset line that I drew. And I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a nice, let's turn that sketch back off. I have a nice shamrock on the front of it that actually follows the contour of my vase. Now I can go back and turn back on my shell. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it shouldn't fail here. So I'm just gonna drag my bar here, my timeline back to the front because now I have my new feature added. Give it a second, it turns the shell back on and I see it's hollow on the inside and I have this nice shamrock sitting here. Now the only other thing I might wanna do, I'm, this edge is pretty, pretty pointy so I might want to add a fillet there. Choose F, click on this edge. I'll see what two looks like. Too big. Let's try one. That seems right. So I kind of just curve the edge a little bit just so it's not as sharp on top. And you know what? I'm going to try one more fillet and see what happens if I fillet this shamrock. This has got to be probably pretty small. I'm going to be bigger. Nope, see it's yelling at me, so that's kind of too... So I'm just going to cancel out that. Let's zoom out, and there you go. We have a nice, simple little vase that we can 3D print. And, uh, I don't know, maybe give to my, my nieces to put in their dollhouse or something.